our modern human brain is one million years old, in other words, quite new. It has allowed us to free ourselves from natural constraints, to invent, create, innovate. It's the pride of our species. But haven't we become a little big-headed? Perhaps we've oversold the idea that our brain is so special with relation to other living species. It's linked to two aspects, the wish to promote mankind and to consider that it's really unique. And then there's the fact we didn't know the anatomy well. It's taken important advances in imaging in different domains to better understand the specific nature of our brain and whether it's really different to that of other species. To answer this question, Antoine Balzot scanned the skulls of prehistoric men and modern man, as well as those of great apes. The objective is to have a high precision image so as to observe in detail the differences, but also the common points. The cranial imprint of this Neanderthal man lets us know what our brain looked like 40,000 years ago. The brains of prehistoric men have gone, so it's thanks to imaging techniques that we can model the form of the brain in 3D and then compare it. Because we've found more and more fossils, we can reconstitute in 3D the form of the brain. We can study a lot more things. Now we can study a lot of fossils of many different species. We're going to be able to compare very small brains. That's a chimpanzee brain, the reflection of its cerebral form on the internal surface of the skull. This one here is a Cro-Magnon man, part of our species of Homo sapiens. And here is the endoskull of a Neanderthal. It's often thought that a large brain is a synonym of intelligence. Since that's what we think, we would be flattered to learn that modern man's brain is the largest of our line. However, the research of Antoine Balzo has shown that 40,000 years ago, Neanderthal had a bigger brain than us. Since then, the volume of our brain has reduced by 20%. So despite his unjust reputation as a thick brute, Neanderthal was more intelligent than we are? It's very difficult to extrapolate from the anatomical information what we have in terms of cognition and to see if there was a variation amongst prehistoric species. If we compare Neanderthal and Sapiens, we see that the first traces of symbolic behavior, burying the dead, using certain objects for decorative purposes, probably for painting, appear at the same time in both species. So there really was an emergence of complex capacities in a parallel manner in two different species with very, very different brains. Even so, it is known that different zones of the brain are associated with particular cognitive capacities. Once again, the research of Antoine Balzo has a few surprises. It is known clearly that there are parts of the brain which are very important for certain functions. For example, the Broca, which is a zone sighted in the lower left part of the frontal lobes, is directly involved in language. It has been shown. In present-day man, this zone is different on the left and the right, and that type of asymmetry there is found both in prehistoric man and in the great apes. How in the name of God are we to know that unless we communicate? We can speak, so I spoke. Obviously, that doesn't mean that everyone can talk in exactly the same way, but on the contrary to what we used to think, it means that the anatomical characteristics permitting language have been present for a very long time. When we finally show that man is an animal, a primate, who has a brain which is also asymmetric, like that of the great apes, we show that things are shared and we knock our species a little off its pedestal by showing that biologically we're not that different from the other primates.
Perhaps we should then look for our exceptional nature in the interaction between our brain and another organ we're also proud of, the hand. This marvel of evolution allows us to touch, manipulate, and act upon the world. It can also drive the symbolic representations dictated by our brain. The mime Hervé Demi knows this better than anyone. He can recreate the marine world with his hands. It's amazing what a man can do with his hands. Yes, but they're a lot more primitive than you think. The origins of our hand take us back nearly 350 million years, and its general structure finds troubling echoes in our distant cetacean cousins. What's remarkable is that with a species we've been separate from for 70 million years, we've both kept the same general structure for the anterior limb. Since then, the morphology of our hand has, of course, evolved, but perhaps not as we thought until recently. The research of Sergio Almesia overturns the previous theories about the evolution of our hand. This anthropologist from the University of Washington studies in detail four great families of hands. Ours, fossil human hands, those of the great apes, and those of fossil apes. He doesn't just observe the bone structure and proportions, but their function as well. For example, he studies the different ways that today's great apes use their hands. Even if they're skilled, they don't have the same precision we do. The hand of today's great apes and ours has evolved differently since our last common ancestor. Here we have the skeleton of a human hand, and this is a very good organ for manipulation because the thumb is relatively long to the fingers. And this facilitates what is called pad-to-pad -pad precision grip. If you compare the human hand to that, for example, of an orangutan, which is not that different from that of a chimpanzee, like you can tell that by comparison, the fingers are much longer relative to the thumb. And for many years, we thought that, that this was the starting point and this was the end point. But now, when we look at fossil ancient apes, we see that their morphology looks not like this, not like that, but more similar to this. By comparing all the observations and measurement made over the years, Sergio could see a new hypothesis of the history of our hand over 20 million years. My current hypothesis about the evolution of the human hand is that it has changed very little since the last common ancestors for humans shared with, with apes. And actually, some apes have evolved more than humans in terms of like, hand morphology by elongating their fingers to be better at grasping branches and moving the tree canopy. So basically my hypothesis is that the human hand is to a large extent primitive. Hey Maurice, please have a seat. I do need some help to get this, this hand of Australopithecus scan today. Sergio takes advantage of the mold of an Australopithecus that is particularly well conserved to make a 3D scan. He can thereby evaluate the proportions of a three million year old hand. I mean, you can see the hand morphology of this Australopithecus species is, uh, you know, even though it's older than three million years, it's pretty much like, a, like that of a modern human. There are some differences like, those are the phalanges, this part here in the hand, and they are, still have some degree of curvature. But the overall proportions, 
this hand basically looks like a modern human, even though it's so old. To support his hypothesis, going back further in time, Sergio wants to study ape fossils. Amazingly, it isn't in Africa, but in Spain that Sergio hopes to find specimens that are more than 10 million years old. So you found the ape already? This part of Spain particularly was part of a specific geographic corridor connecting Central Europe and then Eastern Europe and then in Africa. And it was waves of African fauna coming in. And this particular corridor had evergreen trees that allowed apes to live in. This site is, is in the Valles Panades Basin. And this basin has uh, sediments that span from around 60 million years ago to around 9 million years ago maybe even like younger sediments. So we have this window of time where we, where we have a lot of sediments with all the animals that live in that time. It's a skull fragment, a maxillary, isn't it? The window of time between around 50 million years ago until 99 million years ago is really important because it's when great ape and human family originated, basically. And we have the first fossils that everyone agrees belong to that family here, in the sediments of the sites in this part of Spain. One of the most famous uh, findings is this partial skeleton of an ape called Pyrolapithecus catalonicus around 12 million years ago. And that's the first uh, fossil great ape that has some features really similar to humans, such as the hand, for example. At this new dig, Sergio and his team pursue their quest. But while waiting for the grail, Sergio can't resist his desire to visit the incomparable Piero Lepithecus Catalonicus, who left his clay tomb to go into a museum. This ape actually was the starting of my hypothesis for the evolution of the hunting humans. And just looking at these fossils, I figure that perhaps having these short hands, which is a primitive condition as shown by the fossil record, perhaps humans have just preserved those short hands. And we never elongated our fingers to hang below the branches of the trees and then shorten them again. The research made by Sergio and his team revolutionized the theory according to which it was the start of tool working three million years ago that led to our hands evolution. We have members of the superfamily Hominoidea, which is the group that includes all the living apes and humans that pretty much look already like a human in terms of hand proportions. So we know that at least 18, 20 million years ago, the overall human hand proportions were already present way before the advent of systematized stone tool culture. The observation of present-day apes supports that new hypothesis. The gelada baboon, that they have, in terms of relative thing, length of thumb and fingers, they are pretty much like a human. And what they have in common is that they use tools, naturally occurring stones or branches, or they just like, basically some of them just spend most of the time using their hands to, to forage food to eat. So I think humans evolve like apart from other apes with this combination of noble way of, of locomotion, terrestrial bipedalism, that concomitantly like, uh, led to subtle changes in the hand that allowed for better uh, manipulation, refined manipulation, that probably was part of some novel foraging techniques. At that time, early hominids were not, in terms of how big their brain was, was not very different from something like a chimpanzee or a gorilla. But over time, using your hands to manipulate your environment, like, probably play an important feedback with developmental of the brain and cognition. Which is why this is the conclusion of Sergio and his team. 
One of the hypotheses that some of my colleagues and I have is that in terms of like what we do with our hands, what has changed most is not here, it's here. 